Hi, welcome to a new video. I've just washed my hair. Um, I'm hoping my memory card will behave for this clip because it's being a right pain in my ass. But I'm going to get started because I want to start this vlog today. Um, this is, if you can't tell by the title, a Sylvia Moreno, Gar a Sylvia Moreno Garcia reading vlog. Um, I have three books I've recently purchased from Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Um, and one audiobook I really want to read today, but I want to like briefly introduce you to the thing. So, Sylvia Moreno Garcia is a uh, Mexican author. Oh, well, she lives in Canada, I think, from Mexican heritage. Um, and the her stuff is like so different from each other and bizarre. And I've loved two things from her that I've read previously, which was so different from each other. First off, I read like over a year ago now, like before the pandemic, I read Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Marina Garcia. And I loved it. This is a historical fantasy um, with the underworld and gods. And it was so good. I loved it to pieces. It was amazing. And I've also read Mexican Gothic, which obviously did the rounds on Booktube. Um, and this was also amazing. This is obviously a horror, a gothic horror. Loved this also. I think both of them were like a 4.5 star kind of thing. And so then I have three books that I'm hoping to read over the next like four or five days. Um, we have, um, actually the thing I, one I will probably read last is Certain Dark Things, which is a, um, uh, vampire horror um, or gothic vampire story um, I th and that was an older book of hers that's been re-released um, The Beautiful Ones which is a historical fantasy magic story um, and also Velvet Was the Night which I think The Beautiful Ones is new and the other two are both reprints um, like republish um, so this is Velvet Was the Night which is a gothic th uh, not gothic noir thriller which is the one I'm going to start with I think but I also have from her if my camera doesn't die in the next five seconds while I'm talking about it I might just restart the clip my battery is running out but I am going to also try and read The Sound of Footsteps which is a short horror story that I have on audiobook there's also a sci-fi dual set of shorts, uh, short stories that's available on audiobook and script as well as The Untamed Shore, which is another thriller that she's published. I'm not going to be reading those in these vlog. Um, I'm trying to stick to the, like, I don't know. They're just less the vibe. Like, I'm a bit nervous about The Untamed Shore, which is a thriller, but it's like a literary thriller and features sharks. I, I'm just not in the mood. <laughs> but I'm going to read these three um, and this uh, short horror story. So I'm going to start with the short horror story today, I think. Um, it's really short, so it's on my radar for today, and then hopefully tomorrow I'm going to start Velvet Was the Night, so keep an eye out for that. Alright, so my hair is tied up and I look a bit meh, but I've read The Sound of Footsteps. This is really, really quick. Like, I read it on my drive, um, and it was fast, but I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, look at that blue glare. <laughs> let's let's see if I can do an angle change to fix that. <laughs> um, no. Try, try over here. Is that a little better? A little better. Um, I thought this was so interesting. Like it's a, it's not as like a dark horror as I was anticipating. It's more like unsettling commentary that I thought was really cleverly developed. I can't obviously talk much about any of it but it's kind of about a, a relationship between a guy and a girl that's very tenuous and um complicated and I I liked it I gave it four stars um it's super short so it doesn't have time to like build a lot but for what it is and I've been reading a lot of short horror um and other short form works this month um I thought it worked really well so I gave it four stars uh, so you'll see me back in like maybe tomorrow when I eventually start um, Velvet Was The Night. I'm aiming to start it tomorrow. Um, I actually was wrong. I was so wrong when I talked about the order of publication for Sylvia Marina Garcia things. Her first book was Signal to Noise, which I'm interested to see if it's going to get a reprint. But then Certain Dark Things, the vampire novel, and then The Beautiful Ones came out in 2017. And then Gods of Jane Shadow and Mexican Gothic 
came out with Delray and Untamed Shore also came out in 2020 which I thought was older but I guess not and Velvet Was the Night is the new one this year that's actually come out this year so it's the one I'm going to start with but it's at the actual newest um I'm going to look into and see if Signal to Noise is getting a reprint at all um I am curious because I would love to read it but I really like these covers and would like a matching one <laughs> So I will look at her, look at her stuff. Um, but yes, so Velvet Was The Night is the new, new one. And the others are reprints, um, which I didn't know. So there we go, there we go. <laughs> Hello, good morning. It is Sunday morning. I meant to start last night, but I ended up reading a five-star read all night instead. Um, so I've just started Velvet Was The Night this morning. Uh, it's like 11. I am... Um, 30 pages in. Um, it's interesting so far. I'm waiting to see how the plot like settles in. Um, it's a noir thriller, obviously. It says that on the back. Oh. I see. Me actually reading the synopsis for once and figuring out where this is going to go. <laughs> it's a noir thriller. We've just been introduced to the two main characters. One is Elvis, who's um, employed to break down um, communist protests and, uh, like, beat up people. He's a goon. Um, and we also follow Mate? Mater? Maita? Maite. Okay. Maite is um, a secretary and she's... Good. she's like perpetually single doesn't like her life she's got the things going on um and I, like i i kind of love thrillers that are like everybody's awful people so this is really fitting into that um and she is like obsessed with romance but like she's 30 and it's set in the 70s and her mom's like considering her a lost cause she's a crone basically um, and so she's, uh, she lives by herself, but that's like, not my, that's not normal. Um, and she hates her job and everything's awful and she just reads romance, graphic novels, like comics all the time. And it's the only thing that brings her joy. And, uh, she's cat sitting for her neighbor. And I, from the synopsis, the neighbor is like the crux of the issue that joins the two together because she's a commie radical, um, and goes missing, I believe, and both of them are, like, involved, because she's now pet-sitting for the neighbour, um, and I think the Elvis, the goon, is going to be after her as well, so really interested to see how it all ties together and plays out, um, like, I'm barely in, I've read, like, one chapter from each character, but I'm really interested to see how everything comes together, I think it's going to be so cool, um, I haven't read a noir in ages, and all the noirs I've read, like, true noir thriller rather than, like, just a crime thriller. All the noirs I've previously read have been, like, classic noir pulp fiction style. Like, um, I did a, <laughs> it wasn't even a literature class, but we ended up reading literature for the class. Um, it was, like, a media and crime class in my criminology degree. <laughs> um, and we read... Um, Raymond Chandler as our, like, essay assignment. Um, and Raymond Chandler is a, like, classic pulp noir novelist. Um, and it's fucking weird. And I loved it. Um, but I, yeah, it was like a foiree for me in noir. And I've, I'm sure I've read others, but, like, that's the one I, like, distinctly remember in my head. And it's been a while, so... I'm excited to dive into this. Um, so I'm 100 pages in. I'm talking quietly because my housemate's sleeping. Um, ready for her um, overnight shift. So I'm 100 pages in. I am going to, I'm still determined to finish it today. Uh, and really only one day, but we'll see. <laughs> um, this is, it's just, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it definitely is like two main characters but it's just like dealing with shit 
it's, it's very much grounded in that like everyone's dealing with complex life stuff and makes bad choices and oh it's so good it's very slice of life esque in that regard um but it's very true to genre so i appreciate that also i used a peel on my face earlier um because i was really dry through here and flaky and i used a peel to try and like take some of the gross off um and it took a lot off but even like it's still red and i've moisturized it i don't know and here it's like a cord on my like hip skin fluff and it's just not behaving i don't know but anyway i'm gonna keep reading <laughs> um yeah i <laughs> i'm enjoying it I'm not loving it like I loved Mexican Gothic, but I feel like that's just a uh, product of the genre. It's the kind of thing that like everything comes together at the end. And for me it's a bit slow through the middle, but I am enjoying it and I'm excited to keep going. Has anyone with the brain could have predicted? I lied when I said I was going to finish it today. I am over halfway. Just... Let's see. I'm over halfway. Um... But I'm not finished. To be fair, uh, it hit dinner time <laughs> and I watched a live stream of one of my favourite bands um, where they were playing, it was a recording of them playing a gig from earlier in the year and they were live on chat. <clears throat> so I had a bit of a fangirl moment um, and spent like over an hour doing that and then i ate dinner and jesse and i finished up watching season three of ghosts which we've been watching um and love <laughs> and then we spent like half an hour looking up videos of the actors and like bloopers and stuff and the very very bad um promo for the u.s version of ghosts which is terrible it's so bad. It's so bad. We haven't even watched an episode. We've just watched the trailer and it's awful. And Ghost is one of our favourite shows. So, yay. Um, and then we ended up right about that time is when Brayden got home and we watched um, the latest episode of Drag Race. So, yeah, that was my whole evening gone when I would have <laughs> read most of the end of this. But... I'm going to finish it tomorrow and also get a head skip um, into the beautiful ones also tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I would like to have all of these finished long before. So this is Sunday night. It's currently Sunday night. I want to get them all done by, say, Thursday. <laughs> Pray for me, folks. Pray for me. On the topic of the book itself, I'm still really enjoying it. I, it's hard to explain these like slower paced political style stories because like I can't tell you plot because A, there isn't like lots of twists and turns. It's like more about the environment and like the characters interactions with each other. I'm loving this like farcical moment of them never quite intersecting which is working really well and i'm really enjoying that I don't know, it's just really delivering on what it's meant to be but like it's slow and it's thought provoking and it's character studies and it's cool i'm really enjoying it but it's not like wow fast paced woo it's a very different style and as I said I haven't read it in a while in a long time and they're not something I read often so it's a little bit big brain <laughs> uh, and I'm enjoying it but I just don't know how to explain that to you there was a scene I sent to um April and Paige I sent them a picture it was like the curtains were blue they were made of denim <laughs> and in my head I was just like the curtains were blue they were blue yeah. Yeah. Feeling very big brain reading this. Can this part of my nose just like not be dry? Thank you. Thank you. Alright. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> I just finished 
though it was the night. Um, which I now have a lot more to say about now that I've finished. It's one of those books that I feel like you need the whole picture to really like critique and discuss. Um, this is a noir thriller, which is very, noir to me is very like literary adjacent. It has a lot of plot devices and things that like, <laughs> and noir is very like carefully structured and built and thought out. Um, which is why I think I needed the full picture to be able to really comment on it. I ended up giving this a four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was clever and was really doing things. <laughs> it's hard to describe, but we followed two characters. Um, one is she's an average woman. That's how she considers herself. She's very self-conscious, especially around like she thinks she's ugly and ordinary and no one could ever want her. She's an old maid, old crone basically in her own self-perception and she's it's brought her she's brought herself to kind of like a place where she gets a little high from stealing from her neighbors um but she's very ordinary and then we follow elvis who is a um her name's maite and we follow elvis who is a he's part of a group of like people who are kind of hired to um, spy on and attack people who might have communist leanings um, but they're just like goons basically hired goons um, and they all kind of intersect around this plot around her Maite's neighbor goes missing but she'd left her cat in Ma Maita's care and so it's all about she's trying to find her neighbor to give her back her cat and like get paid for cat sitting and everyone's out to get the neighbor because she's a commie and it all just kind of comes together in almost a farcical way like it everything's like perfect um intersects where they don't quite meet and things like and it, noir has this like genre trope where it's kind of like everything was for nothing it's brutal and people are dying and it's uh like very tragic and things are happening and it all ends up being because of nothing and i really like that and like that's a well-developed trope in the genre um uh, at least from what i've read of noir it's pretty common um, but it's used here really well to, like, symbolise the, like, senseless loss of lives in these, uh, political conflict. Um, and that was, like, obviously a very real thing happening during the 70s in Mexico. And I think it just, like, was really well developed. But it was so hard to, like, try and articulate. Like, I didn't film vlog clips during because I didn't know how to articulate what I was liking or why I was liking it or the complexities of this novel. It's very complex. I do think maybe it's the kind of thing that's like for an audience, but I also think it could be really valuable to people outside the genre. I, I don't know, but I do think like noir is, and this kind of like true noir is something that like you kind of need a bit of genre understanding I guess for it to make sense it's very slow paced and it ramps up towards the end but it's a lot about little machinations and how they tie into each other and um a lot about setting the like emotional tension for a later build up so it's very slow um and that's just like another genre trope so I feel like a lot of people won't like this book, but I found it really valuable. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. So that's my thoughts on Bob It Was the Night. Anyway, I'm about to read a graphic novel and then I'm going to dive in tonight and try and read a bit of the beautiful ones. I'm not sure how much I'll get through. It's already almost 10 o'clock, um, but I'm going to try and read a little bit of it. Um, I'm so bummed because it got caught on something and the... Um, the super mat has lifted up in the corner and I'm bummed about it, like the super mat coating. But anyway, um, 
I'm going to start this and dive in very shortly. And I think I'll have a lot more to talk about this one during because it's a very different genre to Velvet Was The Night. So we'll see. Hi, it's Tuesday morning. I am awake. <laughs> I am having... I'm, I'm taking a yoga class with a friend this morning and then I'm going out for brunch. This shit just won't calm down when I'm mad about it. Um, I'd said either in my TBR or at the start of this vlog that like one reason I thought I could do this vlog is that Sophie Marina Garcia is like a chameleon writer. Like no two of her books have the same vibe or the same tone or the same like anything other than genius. <laughs> um, they're very different. And I was like, I knew that, but I was still a little bit hesitant because <laughs> I never marathon anything. I used to when I was a kid and it gave me so big a burnout within like three books, less than that, two books. I would struggle to stay in the same world with the same writing style for like more than one book. So I don't marathon books like ever. I normally have to split them up by at least one book um, to give myself a bit of breathing space. Uh, I don't know why, that's just how my brain works. Um, but <laughs> I'm literally only 10 pages into The Beautiful Ones. I'm loving it. It's a totally different style, of course it is. It's very, um, I think it's actually Regency era and it's a fantasy, I believe. So it's in a fantasy world? Let me check. Let me Google. It's vaguely French. So it might actually be French. Oh, it is French. Okay. It is set in France. I wasn't sure if it was actually like set in a real French place or it was just a place like inspired by France. Um, in the like, yeah, 18th century. So it's like very... Um, I don't know, I feel like, I want to say, like, Regency, it's a lot about, like, dances and, um, uh, finding a partner and, like, but also magic, because magic is a part of this, and I think it feels different because the Western canon, no, it's not even the Western canon, because France is Western, <laughs> but, like, uh, so many of the books and commonly published stuff around that historical era is more based in England rather than France. And uh, the French scene was like similar but different. <laughs> and it's already like so interesting. And it's literally just people talking to each other so far, but it's fun and there's a lot of intrigue and. I can't wait to dive into this more fully. I'm about to do that now while I drink my coffee. And I think it's just going to be a dream. I'm so excited. So you follow Hector and Nina. And Hector is a magician. Um, a stage magician. And Nina is just a girl trying to find a husband. And um, the magic is telekinesis. And I'm waiting to see how that manifests within the world. I'm really excited. Um, I'm hoping to read a lot of this today if I can, but I do have a lot of work to do today, so we'll see how much I get through. I don't think I'm going to finish it today. I'll probably finish it tomorrow, but we'll see. <laughs> Hi. Oh, let's minimize some glare. It is Wednesday morning. I've just eaten breakfast. Still drinking my coffee. Um, I did read, like, basically nothing yesterday. Um, like, seven whole pages of the beautiful ones. But, I have an excuse. <laughs> I ended up going, I'd, I'd had a planned yoga class and brunch with a friend. But we ended up going way over time. We just kept talking for ages. Um, and so I didn't get home till a bit later than I'd planned. And then, um... I didn't have much time before I then was getting ready for work. So I read my like seven pages in there. Um, and 
then I had to go to work. And by the time I got home from work, we watched a couple of episodes of Drag Race. We'll finish an episode of Dragula, watch an episode of Drag Race. And I just did not have the mental energy to pick up a book at that point. I ended up just going to bed kind of early. Well, early for me. Um, so I read like nothing all day. <laughs> don't know why, but I mean, I don't know why. I don't know why I was so tired, but work sometimes does that. I'm looking after a couple of small children, so that is draining sometimes. <laughs> that were pretty good last night though. <laughs> Got exhausted for the whole day. <laughs> Today, I'm motivated to try and get through as much as I can. If I could finish The Beautiful Ones today, that would be great. But I don't think that's actually possible. <laughs> I have work to do. I'm going to also try and finish my audiobook, which I also don't think is possible. But we'll see. We'll see how much work I get through. Because I'll be listening to the audiobook while I work. And it is reasonable that I might finish my audiobook as well today. Um, but I'm going to try and get through as much of The Beautiful Ones as I possibly can. And go from there. I want to read it. <laughs> I want to be done. <laughs> Not that I'm wanting to rush it, but this whole month I've just been reading slower than I would have liked and I wanted to get to more other things. So I want to make sure I'm keeping on tracking, keeping on task reading these books. So I'm going to try and read most of it today, like at least 200 pages. We'll see. Did I have you this morning? I can't remember. Anyway, yesterday I didn't read as much as I'd hoped. I said I was going to read so much, and I just didn't. We, um, <coughs> I, what did I even do? I just got stuck at work, I feel like. I just had a lot of things to do, and then I made dinner, and then, oh, I did go out for a coffee with my friend, and I made dinner, and then had a bit of a yarn with a mate, and then went to bed. I did read a bit. I read a bit. I read like just under 50 pages. But <coughs> just not as much as I'd anticipated. Um, but tonight I'm about to head to work but the shift I have is a sit and read kind of shift. So I'm taking this with me. I'm currently on page 62 and I'm going to try and slam through like basically all of it tonight is the goal. Uh, we'll see how that actually goes but maybe maybe we can do it there's really like 230 ish pages left theoretically doable so let's see how we go and then we just send up things i am really enjoying it though i love it's historical french we're following if you didn't know um nina who is the younger um she's like making her debut kind of that kind of age in a i think it's the 1700s i'm not 100 percent sure um 18th century yeah so 1700s and she is very clumsy and awkward and she doesn't get along well with people and she's just failing her debut and her um her older cousin's wife is trying to help her out and there's this kind of love triangle going on with this guy who um was obsessed with the cousin-in-law and um wanted to marry her i think they were like low-key engaged but not publicly within the like social spheres and then she left him to get married to nina's cousin um for connections and money and stuff and so he's now going kind of after Nina to ingratiate himself in the family because he's still kind of obsessed with the cousin um Valerie and so there's this kind of love triangle going on between Hector, Nina and Valerie and I'm really interested to see how everything kind of develops. Obviously I'm very early days. I will tell you a lot more when I get home from work tonight. <laughs> so it's been a while since I updated you and I am still reading the beautiful ones but to be fair I got tons of light, so that kind of threw me out. But this book is also a very slow-paced book, so those two things are not helping. But I'm loving it, but it's just slow. It's very much a, like, um, what do you call a comedy of manners when it's not a comedy? <laughs> I don't know. It's very serious and 
dramatic, but it's very much just about like the peculiarities and interconnectedness of people in the 1700 era. Um, is that Regency if it's in France? I don't know. Um, I am more than two thirds of the way. I'm determined to actually finish it today. It's currently 10.30 and I'm about to get cracked in, crack on into it. I also have to read a short story today and I'm also gonna try and start certain dark things as well today. We'll see how it all plays out. Just, just a little, we'll take it by ear. But I also have some housework I have to do. Yeah, we're getting there. It's just been so going. And it, once again, I feel like it's something I don't have a lot of, like, as we going commentary on. So, hmm. <laughs> They're really well constructed, though. This book's going to be so boring. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I finally did it. It is 6.40. I just finished this. I did really enjoy it. I gave it a four stars overall. I do think there's something about Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing, and I think it's intentional, but it really limits me in giving anything of five stars. I think Mexican Gothic's the one of hers that I've given five stars, and it was like a 4.5. And it's that the payoff at the end is great, but the time taken to build to the payoff is necessary, but can drudge a little, like make it a little bit hard to get through. I was definitely true in this. Like, just... Um, not a lot happens, but, like, that's not a bad thing either for most of the book. And then the last bits, a lot happened. It was really intense. Um, I really liked the characters in this. I really felt for them all. Like, I think all that build work is really important, but it just, like, I find it kind of, like, takes so long to get through that I'm kind of starting to almost be bored but not quite and then the end happens and I enjoy it. Everyone's getting home which reminds me I should start cooking dinner. <laughs> um, but yeah four stars for this and I'm gonna start certain dark things tonight. Alrighty so I'm only a little bit into this like 25 pages. It's Sunday afternoon I'm just getting into reading now for the day. And um, I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a really cool concept and premise basically this is an older book of hers, but the premise is like a alternate current, I think, um, where recently vampires were outed and there's like 10 or I think 10 different um, subspecies of vampire. Um, and so they're kind of uh, part of the community and legislated upon and like, um, incorporated into society to an extent, and we're in Mexico City where vampires, it's a vampire-free zone, where so they're not meant to be. Um, there's a young guy who's a garbage picker, a vampire girl who's getting caught up with him, and then someone who's trying to hunt her. Um, I'm loving it so far. It's really cool. Like, obviously, I'm barely touching the waters, but this is a very short book as well, so hopefully I can get through it tonight. We're going to try we're gonna try um and no promises though and i yeah i'm i'm really enjoying it it's really good <laughs> this may break if it continues well may break the classic four star trajectory we've had this video not that four stars is a bad rating but i kind of love a five star i feel like kayla <laughs> i just don't know so i have the sniffles because it was spicy but I'm not going to tell you how long it's been since I last updated this book. But I just finished Certain Dark Things. We can finally wrap it up. I was hoping this would take me like a day. Um, and it's not a comment on the book at all. It's just I've been super distractible. A little bit slumpy. Um, and I just haven't. It like the book was a five star book. I said it. I was like will this be the five star rate of the vlog yes it will be i loved it um it's really like 4.55 but i always round a 4.5 up so it's a five anyway um it was so good uh i just literally could not read more than like 50 pages a day so don't know what was going on there but 
we did it. We just finished. Um, I loved this. I don't know how to explain it. It is a noir and basically follows a vampire who is from uh, an Aztec tribe. A uh, tribe is not the right word. Um, a group of vampires who were like revered by the Aztecs and obviously they still exist in the area. They're vampires. Um, and at the start of the book her whole family gets slaughtered um, and by a different group of vampires. There's like different varieties of vampires, um, subspecies and she has run away into Mexico City and she's on the run from this other group of vampires that are a different subspecies of vampire um, and it's really just all the machinations through the city of her trying to get free the other vampires trying to come after her uh, this human boy she takes on like he's not a boy he's like a 20 year old he takes she takes on to kind of help her and all the little machinations which I think is why noirs like both this and velvet was the night were really hard for me to describe and comment on throughout because it's all these all small little pieces that don't feel like much that build the plot um and it just worked really really well also she has a dog <laughs> this dog i love it um it's futuristic ish, air ish um and it was just so good i really really enjoyed it I, the characters were all really dynamic and interesting um and i just I, it was good it was so good i honestly enjoyed like every page of this um i think compared to velvet was the night this was just slightly more intriguing with the fantasy element for me um but both were really solid um uh, and yeah I think he had a good time. <laughs> I feel like this has been so, I wanted this vlog to be so interesting and it's probably so uneventful. I'm so sorry, but this slump has been like getting me. Um overall, what did we learn this like two weeks? Yikes. We learned that I really like Sophie Marina Garcia and I will continue to read her stuff. I already have um Unbroken Shaw on is that what it's called? I think that's what it's called on order and I will read that at some point which is a thriller I think it might also be noir-esque um and then I have um I have some fantasy stuff on audiobook from her that I want to listen to I gave the other two books Velvet Was the Night and The Beautiful Ones four stars but they were high four stars like they were really good um but didn't quite bump into five star territory and certain dark things was five stars um yeah she writes these very adaptable different um like no two books of hers have felt the same they're all very unique and vibrant and i just really like the grit and the writing style like she does such good work and i think they're really clever and I don't know, I just love it. It's very uneventful, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, if you're interested in something similar like this, of like an author recap kind of vlog, um, where I read a couple of things from the same author, if you know anyone that you think I would like that's kind of similar that writes non-series, um, because I do have trouble binging series, but if there's an author you know of that would do like three or four different books, um, not in a series hit me up i'd love to do something nice like again i'm going to do similar reading vlogs um hopefully in the new year about childhood favorites because there are a few series i will semi binge um by which i mean like have books in between and most of those are childhood favorites or teen favorites so i'm hoping i might get some time in the new year to film something like that so those will be coming up but otherwise keep an eye out i'm going to try and poorly vlog all of Believeathon and clear your shit um well actually i'm aiming to complete all of Believeathon in two weeks uh and then clear your shit clear your shit is running or well, i mean my Believeathon books are going for clear your shit as well but clear your shit is running for eight weeks from the start of november so i'm gonna hope i'm gonna try there might be terrible quality but i'm gonna try it and vlog clear your shit 
so which will also encompass Believeathon. So keep an eye out for those, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye.